So guys, don't worry. Uh, if you face any issues, any challenges, if you are not uh, uh, understanding something, please ask me in one-to-one -one message, okay, or uh, on Telegram or WhatsApp. I will help you in that, okay. And today, one of the team member will join also, and you can uh, will introduce him, okay. So he will be also answering your messages and all because he will get some free time maybe uh, after this week maybe one day he will start in full strength okay so guys let's start so yesterday people were asking if we have 10 systems uh, then how many apis we should have how many system apis we should have so <clears throat> guys this is the one diagram that i found for you people so here, this is the system API, this is the process API, and this is the experience API. So this is complete API-led architecture. And we have one consumer as a mobile app, okay? So we have 10 systems, Oracle, SAP, NetSuite, Database, Salesforce, different, different systems. But every system have, you know, kind of order, customer, and product. So what we did in one system API, we have all product-related uh, data. In second, we have orders third we have customers okay and then we are aggregating all these things uh, either in the experience api we don't need for some cases we don't need the process api as we discussed earlier when we need experience api when we don't need uh, when when we need all three layers and when do we need uh, only experience and system apis okay so this diagram is completely for that so here we have process api that is aggregating the data from these system apis then uh, passing over passing over to experience api that our upstream api and then uh, your consumer is using it okay so in this it is the best diagram to you know to explain that and same we already explained but just a diagram i'm showing okay so this was the yesterday's class uh, just a small topic okay uh, so but today i i will gonna start first with the uh, any point platform okay so what is any point platform uh, uh, so as we already discussed it is a eclipse based integration development and environment okay so it offers uh, kind of uh, two development environments so you can uh, use it to create your apis one is like uh, your visual editor and one is uh, your xml editor so what is visual editor and what is xml editor so this is the screenshot I have took. Okay, so I can easily do the make it small diagram. So if you if you this one is your visual editor when you click. Okay, when you for example this is the API we created, and when we open it, so whatever flow and whatever this window, this is your visual editor here. This black portion. Okay, this is your visual editor. Okay. So I just note down all this for you. Visual editor and next is our uh, XML editor. Okay, so what is XML editor? So XML editor is this. This is our XML editor. You can either you can either use XML editor or you can use your visual editor. Whatever best for you, you can um, write accordingly. I generally use XML editor because uh, I like to write hard like with the you know hard code coding. Okay, so I use XML editor. But for beginners and freshers, you can use XML editor. You just need, for example, this XML editor. Uh, these are component based, like uh, drag and drop uh, your components. Okay. So, visual editor uh, is divided into like five parts. Okay. So, first is your package explorer, this one. Okay. I can show you here also. So, this one is your package explorer okay package package means like uh, that displays your project structure or project folders and in in a you know 
project structure in a tree format. Okay, so that called as package explorer. Okay, you can click uh, here to expand it, or you can like click that. Okay, so this is your package explorer. So one is this. Second component is your canvas. So what is canvas? Canvas is this only. This visual editor that I was showing you. This is only the canvas. This portion. This one. Okay, this is the canvas. Okay, third one is a console. When you when you when you deploy something, when you deploy your application, uh, okay, then you will get some logs here. Okay, for example, I open this one, and I deploy this application. Okay, so whatever you are seeing here. the logs everything the deployment and build related informations that is our console okay so same type of console we have in eclipse also this is for computer science and it background guys they already know what is console and what is eclipse okay so the guys who are from non it background or like uh, freshers who uh, uh, who are from other than other background not from it okay so guys these this is this complete anypoint studio is eclipse based okay eclipse we use generally to do other java like other programmings like java okay so this is this tool emule soft created based on that eclipse okay if you want to use eclipse you can do it you just need to install some plugins over there for mule 3 or mule 4 any one you can use either uh, mule 3 or mule 4 any one at a time okay so dependency and all the updates because you will get fast updates than eclipse plugins okay as per my experience okay so this is our console this window this part this part so we covered 1 2 3 and this is fourth one so this is our mule palette palette means uh palette means like uh, it displays um, it it displays all the blocks that you use uh, to build a mule application for example uh, i uh, i need to interact with i need to integrate with the database i need a http listener okay i need a http listener i need a database component and i need a logger and a transform message all these components are available in the mule palette okay so and this is visual editor this is xml editor i already uh, told you this things now these were about we this is about visual editor one more thing is there uh, i think it's not available here yeah this one okay sometimes when you make like a connection when you create a connection and everything all those informations comes in this part as a connection details so that we call as connection explorer okay so we covered 1 2 3 4 and 5 1 2 3 3 3 4 and 5 so the this is come uh, all about you know our visual editor and uh, visual editor actually that is divided in five parts okay so now uh like uh, what we say the prerequisite to start so prerequisite we already covered we uh, we downloaded in first class our any point studio okay we configured all uh, java jdk and maven uh, paths in environment variables okay so to create first application to start with our first application what you need to do you need to one second i just opening my folder yes so yeah yeah so i have this anypoint studio it at this location that is i downloaded in first class okay so guys uh, when you when you download anypoint studio you face lot of issues to start it to trigger it okay to trigger it you face lot of issues because what generally people uh, do they install any points to means they download the any point studio package they unzip it what they what they do they unzip at very you know 
uh, one second. Yeah, uh, what we do, we generally uh, um, uh, unzip it at very, you know, deeper uh, folder levels. For example, we create C, then uh, tools, then softwares, then mule soft related software, then AnyPoint Studio. Okay, so don't do that because AnyPoint Studio executable file have a lot of uh, folders that have very, you know, uh, big names. Okay, and when it, because it's already have some names, length more than like 64 characters or 64, then it will show you some error. You will not be able to execute this file. Okay, you will not be able to launch any point studio if you will do that. So I always recommend when you download any point studio, unzip it. And after unzipping, there will be two folders in that unzip file. First will be any point studio. Then again, there will be any point studio. And after that, these folders will be there. So what you need to do, go inside that unzip folder and just copy last any point studio folder and copy it and place it at very, at this level of directory, C any point studio. Okay. That is, that will resolve so many issues. If you will see the helper forum, there are a lot of questions based on this. I'm not able to open the Anypon studio. Please help. We are getting this error, that error, blah, blah, blah. So all those errors will get resolved if you will install Anypon studio at this location. Okay. So to launch the Anypon studio, what we need to do, this is the Anypon studio exe. Do you need to double click on it? Then it will. Okay. I just close this one. And then it will be easy to understand. Okay, so this is the AnyPoint Studio. One moment, because it's saving my workspace. I just closed it. Guys, let me know if anybody have any trouble. Okay. I will take all the questions at the end of the session. So if you have any questions, just uh, type into the chat. Uh, how many people's, how many people join You have 32 people. So, uh, and guys, everyone are on our WhatsApp group. If somebody is not in our WhatsApp group, then let me know. I will add him or her. Okay. Okay. So it saved my workspace. Let's uh, launch any point studio. Just double click on it. Okay. It will start a window for you like any point studio 7.11.1 whatever version you have installed and then after that it will open this directory this pop-up it will open this pop-up and there you need to give a workspace folder where do you want to save your works uh, like your um, working space okay working space means the space where you create your APIs, everything will get saved into a folder. So I'm giving this location, you can give any location accordingly, but I try to give very shorter location like we did here for any point studio. Okay. Generally it doesn't affect here, but try to give very, you know, very, don't try to give very deeper directories. Okay. So just click on launch. It will start. Okay. Guys, I'm using three screens. So um, I cannot share all three skins together with, because it will be very small window for you because we are recording the session. Okay. So I'm just take, taking the screenshot for you from the other screen to show you. One moment. Okay. So it is doing, uh, it is opening the screen like this. Okay. It is loading. So if you see this line, this line, this one it will complete and then it will open our workspace. Uh, 
Okay, some people are facing the issue to join the call. Why are you? Okay, I admitted everyone. But it's a little bit taking time because I have so many things in my system. Okay, it will load. Give me two minutes. Uh, in the meantime, you can ask any question because it's a little bit slow. Not sure why. Okay, yeah. go, go ahead if anybody have any questions so far. No questions? I have one question. Yes, please. Uh, Tell me your name first and then go ahead. Yeah, I'm Achita. Yeah. Uh, I want to know, uh, is there any specification we need to be uh, taken care while uh, for Windows, uh, whether it's a uh, 16 GB RAM or 8 GB RAM, something like that we need to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Achita, that we already covered in our first session. So there is some okay. prerequisite that we need to, you know, follow. Okay. okay. Like, like, so you can, if you, when you will watch that video, it will be clear to you. And after that, also, if you have any questions, you can just ping me. Sure. Okay. Oh, sorry, guys. Andra. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is Lintu. Yes. Actually, I, I have one question. Actually, earlier days, uh, we used to follow microservices based architecture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the same architecture we will follow. I mean, I mean, uh, earlier days, how we can design, uh, design uh, RESTful APIs in Java. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between uh, in Java RESTful APIs and uh, in our MuleSoft RESTful APIs? Uh, one moment. I think this met meeting will get end in 10 minutes. One moment. Uh, Lindu, I will answer this. Hold okay. On. okay. Hmm. Actually, I bought the package for this call, but I don't know why it's still saying. Okay. After, after you bought it, have you logged out your account and logged in? Sorry. Mm, no, I just, yeah, I, I think you just need to log out once, then it will take the latest update. Oh, is it? it considers, yeah, yeah, you just log out once and mm -hmm. log into your account again, then the effects. Okay. Okay, let me do one thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe we all can join back again. That's not an issue if others are okay. Okay, one moment. I try something, okay, hold on. I don't know, is even my any point studio is still loading. Okay, in the meantime, I just quickly finish this one. One moment, 
I'm just going on mute. I will quickly fix this uh, Zoom problem. Can others go on mute? Uh, <clears throat> hello guys i think i need to log out and log in again okay because it is asking it will end our call in 10 minutes okay so i drop out i from this call and i will log out log in back okay so if something change if i don't come back in one minute so i will update everything on the whatsapp check your whatsapp messages for any update okay sorry for this interruption because we tested this thing yesterday yesterday we have done meeting for one and a half hour and even in the morning we have done a session okay so sorry for this interruption i'm stopping it this is the main executable file just double click on it it will ask you to give a uh, workspace location uh, add it according to your Mm, system is C D E drive whatever. Okay. And then after launching it, what we'll do, we will create a simple application that displays a message uh, in our our uh, any REST client or like that. Okay. And we will create we will learn about logging in that. We will create a flow, simple flow, not like just for everybody's as, so, so everybody can understand okay we will we and in later classes we will extend all those components like we will add database we will add salesforce like that okay so uh, in win, in windows we have any point in studio exe in mac we will have any point studio dot app in linux we will have any point studio so this is the uh, like you know a difference of executable files depends on each operating system okay so uh, one more thing because 
today i am not covering that but uh, as um, when you will go through the first video there i told you please create a trial account on any point studio okay and also start learning uh, also start learning the uh, self paced uh, training okay self paced training from you know uh, the from mule soft website itself so i i will show you that first training let me show you yes so sign in this is the sign in mule soft training okay when you will sign in one moment Look. Okay, so these are the programs that I already installed for you guys. Okay, these are all self-paced training exam means uh, self-paced training courses. These are free courses because now whoever is working on Mule three, it's fine. But who, who whoever starting learning mule soft they should they need to learn mule 4 don't go for mule 3 because mule 3 support will gonna end uh, soon okay mule soft will not support for mule 3 projects okay so don't waste your time to learn mule 3 just go with mule 4 and for mule 4 this is the course name any point platform development fundamentals mule 4 and after that you need to give this mcd level 1 development fundamentals quiz OK, so these two quizzes after finishing this course, this will be your quiz uh, just like a sample uh, questions. OK, there will be sample questions uh, that you can give to prepare for your exam. OK, uh, can uh, are you guys able to see the screen? Yes. Yeah, yes. OK, yes. there is a person named Achla. Okay, Achla, uh, please rejoin. Okay. Okay. I think uh, because yesterday also it happened. So maybe it's some network glitch. So you can rejoin. Okay. Okay. Are you able to see the screen now? Yes. Yeah. We are able okay. to see. It. Okay. <laughs> So these are the two courses that you need to go. OK, and once you log in to any point training account, if you don't have any credentials, then just create your account. And guys, please take please mind whatever email address you are using for training account that only that email address will be in database of MuleSoft and whenever there will be any free exam, any free voucher, they will give you only on that email address. OK, so don't forget the email address they ha that you have used because some people what they do, they like in my friend cycle, they give MuleSoft Mule 3 exam with some another ID. They give Mule 4 exam with some another ID and later they were asking for merging everything. MuleSoft can merge the accounts, but don't do that. You know what is happening these days? Every company is giving you free training vouchers. OK, so uh, MuleSoft have some record of your email address like you have given the exam with this email address or you have attended the training with this email address. So you will get the voucher only on that email address. You cannot give OK, you, can, you cannot ask to MuleSoft uh, guys. Uh, uh, team, hello, MuleSoft team. Please provide me the voucher on this email address. Uh, but I have attended the training with another email address. It will not gonna huh? work. They will always huh? sync your email address, whatever you have used for the training purpose. Okay, either it is self-paced or it is instructor-led training. Okay, so MuleSoft's first certification level one is self-paced. Other uh, other certifications or other trainings are instructor-led training. I uh, the it is paid one. I, either your organization will pay it um, for you if they are they are having a partnership with the MuleSoft, or you need to buy it. Okay, so how to get these courses? Just go into the courses. Okay, you will have a filter over there, guys. If 
somebody is not doing this training, please do it parallelly. OK, and if uh, you have any doubts with this training, I will cover all these topics, everything, but this is the official training platform, so that will give you more more knowledge, more things to understand. OK, so on this course is dashboard level one and level two. Level two is paid. Level one is still free. I don't know if they will gonna give you a free course for level two. Not sure, but it, it recently launched. OK, so level one self paced or instructor. So if you click on this, it will give you these trainings. Get starting with any point. Any point platform development fundamentals and any point platform for mule four, mule four for mule three users. OK, so this is five day training, but this this five day training is like self paced. Five day trainings will they will give you some homework, some tasks. So many things are there. So if you are focused, if you are you 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 will do day and night, then only five days will work. Otherwise it takes time. OK, if you you want to see if you want to learn seriously. OK, so this is the thing the then you you just need to click on any course and after clicking you need to register for that. Once you will register, then it will show you or and that course will be visible on your dashboard like free. Just register, click on register. And it will ask, do you want to learn enroll the course session? Yes. OK, enroll the course session. Then you just need to go to dashboard or it will start, you know, your training session directly. You can you can do it later. Like if you uh, these are the sessions, every sessions and uh, these are the walkthroughs like they will tell you what is the content and what you need to do. What will be the output of this training? What will be the output of first module? There are 13 modules. OK, so you need to finish all these 13 modules that I will be also covering in my training session. But if you need a free voucher, then you have to complete this training because I'm not providing a free voucher. I don't have any vouchers. OK, I am just giving you a, a, a like a path to crack the level one exam. OK, but to get the free voucher, you have to complete this. It is mandatory. You have to complete this training with 100 percent, uh, you know, coverage. OK. How you will get the 100 percent coverage? Just there is a video time. OK, every every module have a video and some theory theoretical things. So you cannot skip that. So at least if this is a theory, so please read it. Don't skip because once you will reach at the practice exam because you skip this page within two seconds, so it get counts. MuleSoft like in the background, they are counting it. OK, every 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 module how much time you spent they are counting it based on that it will give you the score like did you complete or not so don't skip the videos don't skip any theoretical chapter just go through and give it some time okay don't skip anything then you will get a free voucher if you don't get free voucher or not anything just ping me i will help you in that okay so this is all about starting any point uh, uh, training and in, uh, uh, you need to have a any point platform trial account for this training. So just Google like any point. Platform. Login. OK, so this is any point platform. OK, here you need to create a trial account here. That trial account will work only for 30 days. OK, if you do if you do not finish your training within 30 days, it will get expire. OK, it will get expire. You need to create a new account. You can create multiple accounts. OK, every every account will have 30 days validity. OK, also this this platform account will have all admin rights. OK. Like you can do anything you can do practice anything like if somebody have good experience and they want to be uh, practice some how to set up a vpc virtual private cloud how to set up a vpn like that and how to set up a on premise account everything everything you will have a uh, access for everything monitoring alert uh, adding another person adding a roles uh, everything will be there okay but for only for 30 days okay 
so this is the one and after that i come back one moment so anybody have co uh, question on this related to this one if you have question just raise raise your hand after finishing the mills of training is there any expiry date for the that free voucher yes there is but i'm not sure what 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 is the time limit because if you don't give the exam like there is some validity uh, because uh, you know after getting the voucher just schedule the exam and then you can reschedule many many times like because when i gave my exam i got uh, the voucher i just i uh, to refresh the exam okay to refresh the exam so i have scheduled i didn't sorry i didn't schedule it so it got expired and i was not aware of that then mules of team helped me and they and they reactivated and they asked me to schedule the exam so whenever you get the voucher just schedule the exam uh, like for like after next week or five days or like that but if you don't if you are not able to give the exam please reschedule before the exam if you will not be able to reschedule then your one chance will be waste because one voucher means two attempts so one attempts will be away for you guys okay so if you are not able to give the exam just reschedule 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 multiple times okay but i will i will recommend that if you have finished the training just go with that don't wait like i will give after two three days or like that okay uh, you will just wait your um, your you will just waste your time okay uh, so this is the question can okay i reshare my screen no problem are you able to see the screen now <coughs> yes yes okay fine guys i am not sure why but today my anypoint studio is uh, showing it's behaving abrupt like i don't know what is happening it's not able to start so i'm just waiting for that in the meantime you can ask any question if you want or i just go uh, with other thing okay so i as i already explained the package explorer uh, canvas palette uh, uh, we xml editor okay and connection details where we can see so this was all about studio user interface okay i will tell you some shortcuts also like to run a mule application people don't know the shortcuts okay i will explain you all those shortcuts because every id have some shortcuts okay so uh, like how to create a new mule project how to uh, create a new mule configuration how to create a new raml file how to zoom out zoom in our visual editor okay how to uh, how to uh, make our font size like how to make um, how to uh, what we say how to increase the size of font in xml editor how to export a mule deploy archive okay so for mac and windows and for windows and linux shortcuts are same but for mac like uh, uh, guys are you able to see my screen yeah yeah the this sign in any point platform yeah yeah please yes. okay 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 Fine. yes yes so yeah so for mac we have different shortcuts for windows and linux we'll have same shortcuts okay so that is one and yeah so second is like some people uh, uh, take interest to work in dark themes and some people don't like dark themes so that is also a option here okay so actually a dark theme uh, introduced by mulesoft in any point studio 7.10 it was released with some improvements to studio dark theme okay so if you are utilizing any point studio 7.10 okay skip to enable dark theme for you know in the preference section i will show you that i'm uh, not sure it's not starting for me today it's weird 
yeah guys once you will be working on any point studio you will face you mm, will face some challenges but don't worry about that okay uh, we will help you and if you have any questions on anything you can post it on a helper forum i am a active member of helper forum what is helper forum okay so if you see helper forum mule soft so i am very active member on that okay if you will post any question i will answer on it if i am not there there are a lot of people who are active they will answer your question so this is the helper forum you can ask any question so if you see i am my name is here anurag ss27 if you want answer from me you can just tag me at the rate anurag sh so you will get the answer okay so these are the top 10 contributors in the helper forum okay so many other people are also there okay so if you, whenever you will post a question like processing html response using data view so when you post a question don't give one liner question because we will not be able to understand okay like gives proper title select pro because he, he look this guy is asking data view one and data view both okay so select properly uh, the topic of the question because these are the topics selected properly and this is the description okay if, it, if this is the description in the description when you ask a question in the description you will have some tabs for code to attach a link to attach a file or something so whatever possible informations you can provide in the question provide that based on that it will help us to answer you okay so this is the helper forum that will help you a lot for the training purpose what you need to go don't post any answer also uh, oh, don't post any question directly in this place you need after login just go into the groups okay there are multiple groups like 75 groups are there so what you need to do you whatever group if you are interested for any group you just join it okay and for training purpose there is training getting started with mule 4 click on it okay so this is the for training purpose and mulesoft people itself are there so many mulesoft people who are active they will answer your queries or i am also there i will also a query so you just join a group join that group okay uh, then you will be the member of that group and in the same way you can ask there will be a option i didn't log in so there will be a question ask question okay so training related questions ask here if any general questions you have related to mulesoft then you need to post it here right. ask a question then then give question detail and also if maybe whatever question you have in your mind it is already asked by someone so it will show you the details if that question is duplicate or not and then you can search okay somebody already asked so you can go through that and if it is already asked and it is not clearing your doubt so there is a comment section you can uh, uh, you can say like hey guys uh, i am facing the same problem could you please help me i have i have gone through the complete thread but still okay. it is not fixing my issue okay so just go through it the complete thread and if it is not solving just comment it so this is the helper forum and there we have the so many topics any point platform manager connectors data we want to so many are there okay when you will ask a question there are 10 to 20 uh, topics here it is just showing um, few of them but when you will ask a question there will be multiple topics according like just now a uh, person now was asking one question about microservices so maybe there will be a topic for that you can ask it if you have any question about runtime fabric there is a topic for that if you have a topic related to on premise any connectors any java sdk there is a topic for that select that topic and ask your question okay this is all about your uh, uh, like to start with mulesoft to get help on the training part or to start a training or oh, like self paced training that is really required for, to get a voucher okay sometimes mulesoft uh, you know mules sometimes mulesoft <clears throat> gives some swags if you complete your if you complete your training in that month but it is sometimes like uh, one or two quarter not in every quarter uh, and i will inform you guys 
uh, if it if they will announce something related to that in our telegram group okay so or in my instagram account we uh, we are very active on instagram also so we post informations there you can like this is our account instagram account we post so many informations here also so if you see uh, we have announced our free batch yesterday free online meals of classes okay the team worked and they announced this one on instagram we create uh, we uh, announce meals of meetup also and we create some stories or some posts related to you know uh, like data view how flat data weave data weave is a uh, function language uh, that mule soft use or we call it like uh, mule for expression language also okay so that is the main main you know i will say it is a backbone of uh, mule soft coding in the layman language you should be very you know strong in the data view i will take uh, separate sessions for that in this training only okay so we create so many posts like for example uh, learn how to adapt mule 3 to mule 4 so we created this like uh, uh, if somebody is migrating mule 3 to mule 4 so this post is very helpful because in mule 3 like we were having flow variables but in data we sorry in the date mule 4 we don't have mule ml x uh, ml we have only data view in ml we were having flow words but now we have words so how to access variables how to access attributes how to access query parameters how to access uri parameters how to access headers everything every information is available in these eight pages so you can go through you can follow us on instagram and you will get all the information whenever we create any whenever we will create any you know youtube video we will post it here we cannot post these informations to telegram because it will just show you you know it will just show you a uh, uh, a link it will not show you a complete information i do that i post that link in telegram channel also but it is not helpful because it will not show you some some picture type of post so best you can follow it or not but instagram also we have you can read it if you don't want to follow you can just read the content everything like this okay okay so it's open now thank god okay so let's start now so i think guys uh, i think this was the very helpful information for you guys okay so let's start our first API thing. Okay. Let me close all this. Okay. So I just close all these projects. Right click, just close project. I don't want to use this. Right click, close this. Yes. So this is our ID. We'll start to develop our uh first application okay first basic api okay so what you need to do go to in go to file new new okay uh, the shortcut is alt shift n okay so that is the shortcut you can write down somewhere if you want okay it will give you alt plus shift plus n i will write for you guys Alt plus shift plus n okay so alt plus shift plus n will give you this pop-up okay here because it was creating new so new mule project create a mule project mule project means create a new project so this will this pop-up you will get okay so here what it is same like eclipse if you have a because i have a java development experience so i have used eclipse so in eclipse also we do the same kind of thing to create a new project so guys who like whoever have the experience of uh, eclipse id it's kind of same it's kind of same id okay so here just give a project name because i'm just showing you how to create the first one so i'm just giving you simple name test have an api okay uh, so but you know i'm because i'm just teaching you how to create so i'm giving test api but it is not uh, recommended to give the names like this okay there are some best practices every project every business follow some different um, practices okay 
so you need to follow them what what they have in their projects okay but generally mulesoft also have some best practices i will share those links uh, uh, in next session with you guys what are the best practices uh, we need to follow when we create an application in the mulesoft okay i'm just giving you a sample test api these are the run times okay so uh, you know uh, we say that uh, um, mule 4 mule 3 these are the versions okay so mulesoft you know mulesoft is a organization okay and mule is a uh, mule is a lightweight enterprise service bus and integration framework that is provided by mulesoft so that is the difference between mule and mule 4 okay and what is mule runtime so mule runtime engine is a it's the same whatever the definition of mule that is the definition of mule uh, runtime uh, engine so mule runtime engine is a lightweight integration engine that runs mule applications and supports domains and policies okay so we'll explain that later slowly slowly and we'll grow in next classes and then you will understand what domains and policies like that okay so mule applications mule application i already explained yesterday that mule applications connect system services uh, system services apis and devices using one architecture that is api led connectivity architecture okay so instead of point to point integrations mulesoft follow api led ar uh, uh, architecture okay some of the integrations tool in the market they are not competing mulesoft because they are following they're still following point to point integrations okay so uh, if, uh, people are asking can we use uh, other integration platforms other than mulesoft yes you can but but mulesoft is the best one because it is not following point to point integration it is very fast so many oh, options are there only difference that i will say that it is little bit costly uh, compared to other integration platforms, but it is having high rate because it is giving you so many, so many features, so many features that we will discuss in detail in our upcoming classes. Okay, so if you are an architect, Okay, and uh, if you are an architect and you are you, your company is asking which integration platform we should use. So I would say recommend them MuleSoft. And when it comes on the cost, then you can def explain them what are the features of MuleSoft, what we what MuleSoft can do that other integration platforms can't do. Okay. So this is the thing and it all MuleSoft projects, all MuleSoft projects are Ma Maven based. Earlier it was not like that. I, in Mule 3, it was not all projects were Mavenized. I think they there we need to do it. We need to uh, Mavenize it, but now every project is uh, Mavenized. Okay, and we we already explained that how to uh, set up a Maven in your local system, how to set the environment variables and everything. Okay. It's same like you know like we do in our mule uh, like in java development uh, 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 everything okay so let me create a uh, uh, we have three run times mule run times okay mule 4.4 4.3 4.2.2 but when you will install a fresh any point studio you will get 4.4.0 at the moment okay i have installed three uh, because i need for because every mule, uh, mule runtime have some updates latest is 4.2 4.4 like i was using 4.2 earlier but i have installed 4.3 4.4 because they have some updates they have some new functions some features or some you know and they fix some bugs or something in earlier versions okay so select one if you don't have three, then it will be automatically 4.4.4.0 in 7.11.1. Okay, so if you see this one, this one, 
Yeah. So here would data view versions compatibility with mule runtime versions. That is also a main in mule four data view version is DWL two. This two series series of uh, the version series two supports only in mule runtime four version and data v1 supports only mule runtime 3.3 mule 3 point x okay so if you are using mule 3 so you have to use data v1 if you are using mule 4 you have to use data v version 2 okay and these are all versions then current mule 4.4 we have 2.4 4.3 4.3 2.3 it's like that OK, and the last version of Mule 3 was Mule Runtime was 3.9 and the uh, Anypon Studio Series 6, something 6.9 or something. OK, that you can see in my first video. OK, so this is the uh, post that I created uh, to differentiate like this. OK, so give the project name, just finish it. And it will create you uh, uh, the test API. There are other options like import RAML from local, download RAML from design center that I will create. Uh, I will uh, start in the next session, like how to design an API. Okay, MuleSoft give you a design center where you can design your API specifications. Okay, and what is RAML? So that will be our first part in the next session. We will start. Today I'm just giving you overall idea about ID, about how to create uh, some things like that. OK, so I hope everybody you are. Uh, uh, in sync with me, if you have any issues, just raise hand. OK. OK, it, it's I clicked on it. It's in process. I in the meantime, I just take a question. After finishing rules of training, is there any? Ex OK, that is done. I have been already installed any point studio 7.9. Should I down download again this? Uh, well, if you are doing a training, then go for uh, always use latest uh, versions of Anypoint Studio. Currently, it's 7.11.1. OK, if you are using 7.9, yeah, I, I would recommend you use latest one. OK, but in some projects. You, you can use 7.11.1, but if your project is built on Mule runtime version. Uh, uh, Mule runtime version like 4.2. Then in any point studio 7.11.1, you need to download a uh, runtime version 4.3, whatever your project is using. OK, otherwise you will face a lot of uh, issues when you will deploy the API on Cloud Hub or there can be some uh, functions that is that will not work or there are some updates that will behave. Uh, you know differently. So best is use latest studio, but use that runtime uh, uh, mule runtime that is uh, you are using in your project. OK, so that is the question uh, answer to you. you know. OK, let's come back. This is the API that is created. So as I earlier explained you, this is our package explorer. So when you will create an API, it will give you this type, this kind of uh, uh, project structure in a tree format. So SRC. SRC main mule will have your main XML file. OK, that is main XML file that we get after creating a project from the studio. SRC main Java will act same like in our Eclipse. Old Java files, old Java classes will be in SRC main Java. SRC main resources will have a log 4 J2 file that is very important to log something. OK, you can use log 4 J2 uh, file to, you know, to uh, uh, pass your lo logging. If you want to, uh, you know, logs uh, uh, your logs into external system like Splunk. OK, in that case, you need to configure this log 4 J2 file. OK, this is the API. API will be a, a API will have the API specifications, OK? Like RAML file that we will cover in next our next class, OK? And so that will be uh, uh, inside API folder. SRC test resources, SRC test unit, SRC test Java, all these are related to our, uh, you know, unit testing, OK? I will first I will uh, explain you all about APIs, then I will come back about unit testing, OK? 
JRE system library, whatever libraries, dependency, everything uh, we need or we need to have, everything will go inside this fold, this one in JRE system libraries. All the libraries will be here. These are the by default libraries that we need to create a simple API. OK. Uh, that is the one and we are using Mule Server 4.4.0, so that is related to all these jar files are related to that. You can explore if you want, like if you have very good experience or something and if you want to explore what are these server files, just download it, just copy it and uh, unzip it and you can explore what is there. So I just want to tell you that MuleSoft basically based on Scala, Java and DataView. So there is some percentage. I think 60% is Scala, 30 is Java, and 10 is DataView. Something like that. I'm not I'm not sure exactly, but some ratio is there. Okay, it is based on Scala, Java, and DataView that I know I read it somewhere. Okay, so this is uh, SRC main uh, test. I will let you know why we use this is the target file means whenever you will build your application, it will create a uh, jar uh, jar file for you and it will be available in the target folder. OK, these are the artifact the JSON file. OK, that is also very important that will have very uh, uh, critical information for our properties. OK, uh, we'll cover this one also when we'll Come create a complete full flash project and we will deploy it on cloud up. This is the POM file. OK, so whoever like beginners or who are from non IT background. OK, so they need to, you know, understand what is the POM file. OK, so you can search on Google. What is the POM file? OK, then if you have any questions, you can ask me. I cannot cover the complete understanding of POM file. It will be a big topic, so I'm just uh, helping you like Google it. What is POM file? There will be, uh, you know, there will be so many links. How do you create a POM file and everything? So but you don't need to read everything. You just go to a simple link. Uh, what is POM file? I think it is on a one second. I search for you guys and show you. OK, so this is the what is POM file. OK, so everything is here. <clears throat> it will explain you everything, whatever it is written here. <clears throat> it will explain you each each. Each line, each line in this link. OK, so please go through this one. OK, I can ping you this link in the chat. Down. I pinged you. You can save this <clears throat> link somewhere at the safe place and then you can explore about this. OK, so POM file, we will have all dependencies, plugins, every information inside this. OK, so this is all about our uh, package explorer or each uh, element inside this tree. OK, so now let's create a simple API and we'll. Uh, finish this class for today of doing this. OK, so this is the mule palette that I already explained you. This is the console. This is the package explorer. So to get started, drag an operation or scope from the mule palette. OK, so like I need to create a simple API first HTTP listener. So HTTP listener have basic security filter listener load static resource and request. OK, I will explain you first listener. The other things will cover later. We don't need to use all these. Basically main is listener and requester. Basic security filter and load static resource. We hardly use. Signed one moment. OK. Hmm. So this is the POM file. It's done. OK, this is the listener. I will I will take first all the components and then we'll explore the logger to log something. OK, and then transformer basic components I'm taking. So you can understand. OK, 
OK, so this transform mesh is our DWL. That is like uh, DW, it will give you by default DWL2. Let's hand one moment. Guys, everything is fine or if you have any complaint, let me know. Just unmute yourself and tell me, OK? OK, so yeah, so this is HTTP listener. OK, uh, it means um, that listens an operation to receive your mule message. OK, over HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Yesterday I told you what are the ports we use like 8081, 8082, 8091, 8092, and what are the meanings of those ports? OK, yesterday I explained it and to configure a listener, we need all those details. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, to uh, to configure a request, a HTTP requester that I will tell you later. We need to give those ports and everything, OK? So to, this is the uh, li uh, uh, listener that receives a request for the API, okay, in the form of uh, you know mule event, and pass that request to next element or next component to process that mule message. Okay, <clears throat> so this is uh, what we call this is the uh, HTTP listener. So we need to configure first HTTP listener. OK, so display name is listener. You can give any name here. So whatever you will give it, uh, it will show you here like JKDS. If you don't give it, then. It will be simply listener and it will be like this. OK, so we need to first configure the listener. And connect then is basic settings to connect for connector configuration. <clears throat> Every connector will have a connector configuration. OK, uh, like listener requesters or any any other third party connectors like Salesforce to integrate with the Salesforce work at all. OK, and database. OK, so first connector configuration, click on plus sign. It will uh, it will give you a pop up where you need to create. So because it's a basic API, so I will not touch anything. I'll just explain you protocol is HTTP protocol. OK, if you hover on it, it will show you what does it mean? So protocol. Um, guys, uh, go on mute, please. OK, so uh, if you will hover on it, it will explain you what does it mean? OK, so it means like protocol to use for communication. Uh, most of the things in this Anypoint Studio, it explain you. Over the, it explains you like this. If you will hover it, hover over it, it will show you. Like in the same way, if you you want, what is the transaction ID, right? What is this? So, uh, one moment, like this. If you will hover, it will explain you. What does it mean? Okay. So most of the things you will get, like the, for example, if there is Salesforce, like one uh, system. OK, and for that system, we have so many connectors and you are not able to understand which connector I should use. So like for example, query, query to uh, query something from the Salesforce. There are look how many connectors query, query, all result, this, this, and you are not getting OK. There are so many connectors and I don't know which one to use. So you just who are on it and it will give you. If one second. It will explain you like earlier. I don't know why it's not coming. It should come. It will explain you what does it mean? What does this connector means? What this query like this retrieves data? Return a list everything it will explain you and based on that you can you can uh, you know select your connector uh, uh, Salesforce connector. OK, so this is the one and now go back and click on connector configuration. This TLS advanced. I will cover all this because today our protocol is HTTP that is like not secure one. OK, if it is mentioned when using HTTPS, if you will hover on it. OK, protocol to use for communication. Valid values are HTTP and HTTPS. Only two protocols are there for HTTP listener. Either it is HTTP or HTTPS. It will come like from the drop down. 
HTTP, HTTPS. If you if you uh, your API is HTTPS, then use HTTPS. Otherwise, use HTTP. Okay. Host is what is your host? Is this 000 is default, and also there is local host. But if you don't use local host, you can. If you are giving this, that it will also work like a local host. Okay. Port is 8081. When you deploy your application on Cloud Hub, 8081 is the port that uh, like port for HTTP. Okay. And 8082 is the port for HTTPS. Okay. And in the same way, if you are on VPC virtual, you're on your private network, then you use 8091 and for HTTPS 8092. Okay. This is the port. Okay. So, TLS advanced, we will, uh, you know, over the time we will use all these configurations, but today it's a basic one. Okay, so general, a give 8081. On local, you can give anything like 6770, whatever. Okay, so 8081 by default one, I'm just click on OK. It configured, but now it is giving you an error. Click to open the error details. If you will click on it, it will show you what why it's giving you error. So my attribute path is required. What is attribute path is this path. This is the path it is giving you right here. So path is like I'm giving test. So yesterday. Uh, I explained these things. When I were explaining the payload architecture. One moment. Okay, it is opening. Hold down a little bit slow. Uh, Postman is our REST client. You can use uh, any REST line, uh, but um, during this training session, I will use uh, this one, Postman. Okay, so path. Path is like basically it's an API endpoint. Okay, so that is the path I'm using slash test. Remove this one. Okay. So this is your path. This is your port. This is your host. This is your protocol. So this is the complete structure. Whatever you are giving in HTTP listener. So we gave some con we gave the path and other things we gave in the listener configurations. OK, so and how we will use it in our URL to call that API that will listen on the port number 8081 this on this local host and on this protocol and this is the method this is the list of all the methods as i requested earlier to all my freshers and uh, non it background people that please read about these things okay uh, yesterday i mentioned that i think still i have in my sheet this one i told you what is delete update at least you should read what is the crude methods i create delete update patch okay cloud computing everything like uh, simple http status codes uri params query params please read it otherwise you will not um, uh, get whatever i will explain okay so this is the basic thing this is the body this body means you need how you want to pass your mule message the payload the content of your message okay you can pass in the form of form data uh, and, uh, and xww form url encoded row row will have like json text html xml in any format binary graphql everything i will not cover graphql uh, i will just cover these in the training that is the basic one all others are like form it i will cover none i will cover but uh, uh, url encoded i will cover binary and graphql will see uh, uh, if we'll have a time okay because it, it is like 
it is GraphQL will not be in your exam for level one. OK, so this is set now. We have configured our HTTP listener. OK, oh. so it's one more flow is created. Delete it. Oh. Sorry, it's a little bit slow for me. OK, so this is the logger. If we want to log anything of, uh, like what the mule message, what are the import, like what are the attributes, query params, everything you can uh, give that in message section. And it can be info, debugger, trace, one. All these levels have some meanings. OK, so that you can read it. There are so many articles uh, uh, to understand. Otherwise, I will cover one by one during our complete structure of the API. OK, so by default is info category. Uh, category actually we define based on our business requirements. OK, we don't define like simply what are the category. Category defines what type of logging you are doing, everything like that. OK, that also I will cover you um, when I will design the API specification and I will import it here. Then one by one everything will be there. OK, this is this. we are covering just I'm showing you how how we can use how we need all these components. OK, so I'm here. I'm just giving you hello world. Message input something. OK, and this is switch to expression mode if you want to use mule expression language that is in mule for it's a data view 2.0 then you need to click on it and then uh, whatever you will write here it will be your mule expression okay so for example if you want to do some operations or something then you have to use this will show you the difference when we'll have actual data transformations then it will be better to understand why we need effects and why do we need just a little mode okay so this is the one and here is the transform message it gives you by default the output mime type is application slash java you can con convert it like json so many mime types are there like json or uh, application slash xml okay uh, in the mules of document you, we will get it OK, I will explain you Java XML text plane. OK, um, these kind of MIME types. OK, and here so this is our header of the payload. This is our delimiter to, you know, um, split the body and header part. So this will be always there. This you can skip. It's not required because it's just a version of the data. We what version is there? So this you can skip output will be always there because it will uh, it is defining that what type of mime type in the output you need. OK, so and here you can define anything. If it is an XML, then you need to give an XML type of body. If it is an uh, sorry. If it is a JSON, then it will be a JSON type of structure. So guys, if somebody don't know about JSON, so please read it. What is JSON from the Google? So many articles are there. OK, so you will get all the knowledge and it will help you uh, to understand uh, all these three things. OK, so JSON actually uh, it's like um, what we call uh, it's kind of a file format uh, or like standard file format uh, uh, to you know to transfer the data in a readable format okay so it is widely used okay so so many articles are there to understand it it will be easily available the full form of json is like javascript object notation okay i, I will write it for you guys uh, json is java script object notation OK, this is the full form of this and it is a standard text based format to represent our data data structure based on some syntaxes. OK, a common example of uh, JSON is something like this, like. Name. 
name is Anurag. Okay, like this is the basic example. Okay, so string, so string will always come in double quotes, and it is correct or wrong that you can easily you know validate because some people ask the questions on helper forum. Uh, like my input is this, I need this output, but they don't know their input structure or output structure is right or wrong. OK, so what you need to do JSON lint dot com. I generally use this JSON lint dot com. I will ping you. In the chat. It will be helpful for you. OK. So this is JSON lint.com. So what you need to do, you just paste. Oh, sorry. Because. Okay, just copy this. Um, just click on validate JSON. So if this JSON is fine, correctly formatted, then it will show you valid JSON. For example, I have some mistake here, so it will because there is no next element in the JSON, so we don't we cannot put comma here. OK, so then it will be wrong JSON. It's just valid. It's a valid JSON. Fine. So what we'll do, we'll just quickly finish this. So we just save the file, just control S or if you uh, if you don't want to use control S, just these are the save buttons. Save control plus S and save. If there are so many other files are open, then uh, Control shift S will be your short uh, sh uh, sh what short key to uh, save all the files. OK, so then what we need to do, we need to just deploy it or we need to means like we need to run this API. OK, so you can on this visual editor, you just click on just right click. There will be this pop up and there will be option run debug undo go to xml or uh, blah 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 okay we need to run it if you don't want to run from here just click on this run and run configurations okay there will be this uh sorry this one okay click on this because our api is uh test api okay so it is showing test api click on this OK, select the mule runtime and main thing is always clear application data because sometimes uh, there is a caching. It will not clear the data and you will get some, uh, you know, we, weird behavior from any point studio. So always click on this. Always click, always clear your application data. So use this option always and apply and then run it. It will run the program and this is the console. It will load whatever dependencies, whatever mm, some logs will be there. You can read it and you will get some understanding, but it's not like I will know I, it like. If deployment get failed, then it will show you some error. If deployment is get passed, then it will show you like deployed successfully. OK, so it's starting. It is checking like. Look the command Maven clean plugin clean default test API. All Maven commands are running. OK to deploy the project. OK, second thing is uh, in the meantime, it's getting deployed. This is the window. This is the preferences. Go to the preferences and there all the preferences are available like what Java you are using. What is the any point studio analytics and all when you will click when you will. These are the benefits. These will give you the benefit when you will have a trial account and you will add it in your Anypon Studio. I will show it later. OK, <clears throat> so all these are things here. If you search like Java. So in Java. What is the execution environment you are using? What is the installed GREs? All those informations are available here. OK, so mm, this is for mm, this one and also the appearance appearance uh, type filters. What is the build path? OK, what are the user libraries? If you this is the all information user libraries can be added to a Java build path. Everything will maybe most of the things will cover. OK, so <clears throat> this is about the preferences. And I think one more option I was talking about dark mode. So this is if you see this option, 
I think I'm not able to zoom it, but this is the option here. Uh, it's a dark theme. If you will click on it, it will, you know, it will switch the studio to the dark theme. OK, and uh, I think how to do it back. Click on here. No, this is snapshot. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, switch to light theme. Then click back. It will con convert back to the switch uh, light theme. OK, so it is deploying the application. <clears throat> it takes some time, two minutes. And then we will because we have a listener uh, a logger transform message and from here we will just pass a request. OK, we will you know we will pass a JSON request. I'm not using it because I'm I will use a get method to get it means uh, to get something. OK, so I don't need to pass any body, so it will be none. This is the HTTP protocol host uh, port and the path that we configured in our HTTP listener. So once it's deployed, I will hit that. You can minimize the mule palette. OK, and this is the termination. If your application is deployed, it will be red. If it is undeployed, then it will be gray color. This is remove launch. If any launch is there, if launching, then you can put it. The, you can click on it. This is the to clear console. This is to log the uh, scrolling. This is scrolling because sometimes there are so many logs and you want to read some logs. Then you can click on scroll log. OK, and uh, so, uh, just hover on it and it will give you the meaning of each button. OK, so it's deployed. You, you can see test API. Default and deploy, so it means test API we have selected uh, in that uh, during the run configuration and it's deployed. OK, so now what we need to do just hit this. OK, and you will see the logs look info because there was a logger with info uh, type. So look hello world message input. It is logging that hello world in message input and we are getting a response name Anurag. OK, and status is 200 by default status is 200 and that is if you go to XML editor. <clears throat> so this is all about creating an uh, API simple API. There was nothing just a simple to so, sorry uh, to uh, to give you some understanding. OK, and this is the XML editor. Whatever you are writing inside, uh, whatever is there in the uh, connectors everything is available here you should understand like if i will remove this this one this is the e transform message if i'll remove this it will remove my complete uh one second yeah something is wrong okay how you like the complete one this one okay go back it is removing your date transform message okay and come back OK, if you will remove only this, it will remove the body of transform message. OK, these are some XML schemas that we required for each uh, component. When we are using HTTP listener, it will add that basic uh, X, uh, X, XSDs, XML schemas OK, by default. So whenever you will paste from another project, some people what they do, they just copy paste this and these, you know, these connectors into some other XML, uh, XMLs, only the flow. La flow is starting from here. This is the flow name. Test API flow because we give the API name test API, so it will by default create test API flow. You can change it. Just double click on it and you will change the test API flow. This is the initial state. What do you want to do after deployment? Do you want to start it or do you want to stop it? whenever it will get deployed. If you will click on stopped and whenever and you will hit the URL, it will not get start because you have set its initial stage at stopped. OK, started means it will start default. It will be start. OK, so this is that. And uh, whenever you copy this flow from some other like from some friend or something. That time it will not some components will not work because their XML, their XSTs, XML schemas were missing. So always whenever you paste some code like some components, so always do one thing. Go to mule palette like if you are copying Salesforce connector, go to mule palette, click on Salesforce and search for the same connector that you copied. Drag and drop. 
okay it will get duplicate then what will happen because by doing this it will create xml required access access these okay and then you can delete it and your flow will work perfectly fine otherwise if you will don't if you don't do that then your flow will not work okay and also whenever you add some connector it will add its dependency here in the pom file okay like if if uh, i'm using http connector then this dependency getting uh, this dependency added automatically in the pom file in the same way some other salesforce are used so it added the salesforce okay in the same way all dependencies related to that connector will get added by default in this pom file okay so uh, guys this is all about the simple uh, implementation of an api from next class we will start proper designing of the api like api specification so if anybody have any questions just let me know otherwise we'll wrap up we are already late so i'll take a minute uh, you're able to hear me yes 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 yeah so i tried deploying it somehow i got an error with the groovy it's the saying groovy. unsupported class file yeah so uh, are you doing in the same way like i have done yes yes okay and uh, uh, okay then i need to check that okay i'm not able to post that message in the chat somehow the chat no no you will not i think uh, i'm not sure but don't worry person no? you can ping me your error on telegram one to one not in the group okay oh no that that is the error right so you can paste it in the group that i was doing this and i faced this error so i i will answer over there or somebody from my team or somebody like people who are in this call they also know so they will you know they will answer you okay it's very okay. easy for okay so don't worry about that if you are not able to post that here okay but did you get it whatever whatever i have explained okay so guys anybody have any question how many people are in the call yeah anrag this is lintu yeah lintu tell me anrag can you hear me yes yes yeah i asked about uh, differences between uh, microservices hmm question okay so can you repeat again i mean yeah sure yeah uh, actually i mean before uh, we will soft actually we used to develop projects in java mm -hmm. by using i mean java and also mm -hmm. we i mean so we will be able to create uh, some restful apis in java so so you just want to uh, uh, ask like what is the main difference between an api and a microservice right if i'm not wrong no they ask you more no, no, no. actually in java in java side also yeah yeah go ahead lintu uh, and uh, actually in java also we have microservice i mean restful apis and also in uh, mulesoft also we have restful apis we we'll create uh, in any find platform like restful apis mm -hmm. so what is the difference between java side my restful apis and the mulesoft side restful apis i would like to know about differences <laughs> java side i don't know because i didn't work uh, in the java microservices okay okay so maybe i will okay. read about that some um, something first and then i can answer you in that okay. term okay so don't worry i will answer for sure i have noted down but because i have never worked on java microservices okay or like how we create rest mm -hmm. api in java so give me some time like um, maybe tomorrow i will answer on this okay i have no, noted down no, no. your question okay okay no problem okay any other question is there yeah no can you give some tips and guidance related to mcd level 1 yes i will i am giving already i gave lot of tips today but in the session and oncoming un, upcoming sessions i will definitely give more tips okay 
टेलीग्राम ग्रुप and we'll answer with all whatever skin shorts if you have for the errors so we'll help you on that but i think it's a issue with your java version i hope but don't worry just paste the details uh, yeah uh, shubham yes i will uh, yeah as i said i will give some tips to first tip is like go through this any point training self paced training okay and this training focus on this training because i am explaining a lot nobody explain like this because i have also took the trainings from mulesoft okay to clear the certifications when i started there were no trainings when i started in 2015 there were no training for the mulesoft okay there was nothing there were no mules or documentations so lot of things we uh, learned from our experiences so i will explain you guys that thing okay so stay tuned and whatever i am explaining uh, focus on that plus your training self paced training you will get lot of things to crack the exam because whatever for level 1 training i will explain each connector with the proper example with error scenario and plus success scenarios so there will be no chance that you will not clear the exam definitely you will clear the exam okay and uh, i will give all the tips for that okay uh, what is the next question there were a question guys if you don't have any question and if you want to drop out you can drop it i will stop the recording and i will share it with yeah. you guys okay yeah.